It goes without saying that Animal Crossing for GameCube was the series entry that cemented its popularity, and is the reason why we're all playing New Horizons in modern times. Released back in 2002, this game remains my favorite of all time, and I consider myself an OG fan for the fact that my friends and I grew up playing it in elementary school. They had been playing it for a few months prior to me having bought it, so discussion was rife with all of the different characters you could meet, the grind of paying off your debt, and even what everyone's face looked like. Yes, those were the days, and it was that mystery of not knowing how far the game went that drove us all to keep discovering its secrets. However, we weren't the only friend group who had our talks about the game. In fact, the people who bought it on release day weren't even the first players to experience it. That honor was reserved for only a few hundred people through a special contest held by the Big N themselves. Before that happened, however, Animal Crossing made its North American debut earlier than most people might remember. During Nintendo's E3 press conference in May of 2001, they released a gameplay reel of upcoming GameCube titles. Among them was Animal Crossing, although at the time, the game had not been renamed. In this form, the game had retained its original Animal Forest name, and even got a freshly made translated logo, which was the first and only time this happened during the localization process. The clips used are speculated to have been taken from the Japanese version, and Nintendo's website would also retain the Japanese name until March of 2002. Animal Crossing was a highlight of E3 that same year, and moving into the summer months is when the pre-release adventure begins. In August of 2002, a little more than a month before Animal Crossing would release in the US, Nintendo launched a campaign called the Pioneers Program, which aimed to put early copies of the game into the hands of worthy players. To enter, you had to submit a response in 50 words or less why you should be sent a copy of the game, and if selected, would receive that, along with a few cool goodies, including a calendar and letter from Nintendo. Most notably, the disc itself is stamped with a promotional use only seal, distinguishing it from the retail copy. The number of contest winners who received these items was very limited, as entries were submitted in teams of two, making this item very scarce. The goal of this Pioneer's program, however, was not to aimlessly create a rare pre release copy, but for players who received it to play it and experience the game in order to generate buzz in advance of its nationwide launch. An old Moby Games thread from one of the pioneers named Joshua details some of this experience. He states, We basically played the game, traded with our fellow pioneers, and helped create pre-release hype for the game on places like online message boards by telling people about our experiences. Furthermore, the pioneers were given access to an exclusive web forum where they could discuss the game among themselves. In addition to the Pioneer chat, they were also given access to a secondary chat with the game's localization team in order to provide feedback based on their experience. Now, you might be wondering if anything was changed from these pre-release copies of the game to the final game, but it's been confirmed that the two are byte identical. There is nothing exclusive in the Pioneer version that cannot be accessed in the retail release, which stems from the positive feedback of the Pioneers. Joshua adds that nothing too memorable happened with the localization team, but that it was a cool experience nonetheless. Curiously, you might be wondering what Joshua wrote that got him selected to be a pioneer, which he also details in his post. He got paired with an online buddy named Alex, and together they wrote haikus to make good use of the low word counts. These are pretty fun to read, which clearly ended up working in their favor. While I was too young to have participated in this program at the time, that's not to say I wouldn't still like to own a pre-release copy of the game. I know I've found a few different listings for them over the years, but the only one currently archived is from 2014, and sold for around $500. Unfortunately for me, their low production numbers make it very hard to obtain one, and with the popularity of the series now, the price would go even higher. If anything, we can thank the Pioneer team for their positive feedback in keeping the game as memorable as we know it. In fact, the GameCube title was so popular that it was used as the basis for Wild World's early development as seen in a trailer from E3 2004. This gameplay looks much more identical to that of the GameCube version than anything Wild World would become, 
which makes me wonder what Wild World would have been like if they stuck to the more traditional routes. Though it seems like it was for the best, as the Pioneers program is a really cool and obscure stop on the Animal Crossing timeline, and something special those selected players will always keep with them. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other game-related Glossed Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.